Welcome back to Modeling Fundamentals. In this part 14, we're going to go through some of the additional modifications we can do, like divide and polycut. But uh, we're going to draw some objects in. You're going to see that we're going to start to expand on some of the knowledge that we've been working on as far as our uh, focal points and origin points and so forth. So um, keep practicing this sort of stuff as well. I'm going to give us something to cut up here in this session. So we are going to draw some grating in. Grating just starts life as a plate, as a poly plate. And if you recall back, we set our thickness. So I'm going to make mine 32 mil. We check its name, or its label. Okay, so we give it a name. In the name here, you'll find grating. Set the material grade. If you scroll all the way down in the Australian sections, we have the WebForge grading type. I'm looking for the C325MP, 32mm thick using 5mm bars. I just noticed that I've got part family set here. Set, always make sure that's set to no assignment at this point. And our insert edge, because it's grading, I want to come from the bottom up. Okay, so all of this stuff we went through in the plates tool when we were going through that at the beginning. So I'm going to insert by two points, two corners, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set an origin point to the center of the column, because I don't want it to start drawing the, um, the grading just yet. So I'm going to go tentative snap, origin, and I want to come to the edge of that beam there. Now I'd like to start drawing my grading, so I've accepted that, and I will come across to here, and I'm going to go tentative again. I don't want that. I just want to push it through to halfway along this beam here. So I'm going to have to lock that for that to work. So lock. So it keeps going. And you can see the little dotted line means that it's following along in a locked plane. All right. At the moment, this is just a plate. So I'm going to go to the properties, pro steel properties of this plate. And general data layout and down the bottom here there's a grid switch. I can turn that on and that puts the load bar markers and the grid marking on to represent grading as you can see here. All right. Now along this edge here grading in Australia doesn't sit flush on that edge there it always sits 10 millimeters in from an edge so I'm not going to cut it I'm just going to drag it. I see a lot of people cut along the edge of grading, please don't. Please just pick up this middle uh, handle or the grip and drag it back the amount you want to drag it back, 10 millimeters in this in this case here. Please don't do a cut where you don't need a cut. It, it's uh, unneeded metadata within the model. Okay, and it just loads your model up. Now this one here, at the moment, if you remember, that's running in the middle of my beam. I don't want it running in the middle of my beam. I want it running, if I'm going to have a 10 mil gap, it's got to go 5 mil. That way the, the, the next one here on my left that I place in, he's going to make up 5 as well, giving me a 10 mil gap. All right, so that's my end result. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to need to divide. So I'm going to go to the modify command. <coughs> let's look down on top. Actually, let's go object view centered. A little trick I want to show you with object view centered here, you can see my handles here are in the middle of the plate. A lot of people get trapped with this because what they do is they zoom into the edge of the plate like this, pick it, and then the little the little uh, graphic here, they can't see it because they're looking out on the edge. It's always in the middle, okay? So so just, just try not to zoom in too much and look in the middle for your little for your little cube. Now I've grabbed the modify command here and I want to come to number two here, divide. Now if I want a 10 mil gap each side, I've got to set this to five, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my plate, I'm gonna go point, and I'm gonna try and find the middle of this UB, uh, the, sorry, the PSC, and I'm gonna divide it five mil each side of, of where I select, give me a 10 mil gap, which is standard here for Australia. So back to, Modify, divide, grab the next bit, location, 
Now I didn't grab point that time. Um, as long as you go across the object, it will be happy to do that. Really, I, my procedure is to grab point. All right, um, and that should have it. All right, so so that's pretty standard with divide. We, we've done divide before, and um, I'm just sort of running back through it again, but it's pretty easy. Next thing we want to do, you can see we've got an interference here between the column and the grating. So this is where our polycuts come in, and the polycuts are something we haven't seen before. So I'm just going to make a copy of this guy, and I'm going to lock that and move it up, just to give you a better idea of, of sort of what the grating is going to look like around this column here. So I've got my 10 mil split between my two bits grating now, and you can see the column interferes with it. And don't be confused between what's the column and the end plates. Okay, the end plates are currently flush, I think, from memory. All right, so um, at the moment I can do a poly cut, and that would be size for size around the object. Alternatively, I could set a gap around the outside, so I can nominate where my cut is, but go 20 millimeters more, as an example. Now, steel on steel with grading is a 20 mil gap. And the first in my polycut options over here on the left is by user-defined points, which will allow me to pick the perimeter of my polycut. So I'm going to choose the grating that I'd like to, 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 to cut out first, and then I'm going to run around and I'm going to grab the corners of my column. And it can come up here to close. Okay, and what it's done is it's gone 20 millimeters around the perimeter of the column itself. So let's do this top one here. Again, corner, 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 and close. Okay, and 20 mil clear. And remember, that's 20 mil clear of this column here. It, the the end plates happen to be 20 mil thick as well. All right, but but the points we chose were around the uh, column itself. Now let me show you an alternate method here. For this guy. I'm going to draw a rectangle just around my column here, just on the corners, come to my poly cut, and this time instead of that first one that we use, we're going to use a second one. So I'd like to cut the grading by this polyline, okay, or polygon, this grading by this polygon. So that way is super easy as well. Personally, I don't worry about drawing the rectangles on my jobs. I just run around and I um, I pick the points, to be honest with you. But as you can see, that's um, cut that out nice and neat. Because our end plates for our beams were already flush with the top of steel, we didn't need to get around those, but please bear that in mind if we've got to dodge the bolts or um, something like that. You want to be really mindful of that. Collision detection will pick that up a little bit later for us. Alrighty. Next thing we're going to have a play with is a Boolean operation where we subtract one object from another. So I'm just going to draw a piece of pipe that's going to come through the grating here. So just two point. I'm just going to flip that up and just draw a piece of pipe coming up here. I'll finish that off and I'll just drag I'll just drag this guy down so he goes through the grating. Okay, just like a pipe penetration. Come back to our modify back to our polycuts. I'll leave it at 20 mil clear again, but this one here is, is like subtract one object from another object. So from my grading, I want to subtract the pipe. Now if I zoom in on that, you can see that it's actually taken the pipe out of the grading. And if I move this now, it's, it's parametric, it's intelligent. So if I move that, you can see it moves the hole with it. If I were to change the size of it, just um, change the properties of it, shape type, let's make it a big pipe, actually let's get this out of the way so you can see what it's doing. Okay, so I don't use that one very often but it, it's, it's a pretty handy little function and you can subtract one object off on another object and you can do it with a pipe to a pipe and get the, the, the um, connection between two pipes and things like that. So that one's a pretty handy one to know. Now at this point we're starting to get a fairly busy little model with everything that's in here now. This grating is starting to overtake everything. You can see that it's hard to see the steel work underneath it. Same with the purlins. 
So this would be an opportunity for me to introduce you to the display classes. The display classes allow us to filter things on and off. So um, if it doesn't populate that list immediately, if you come to templates, it, uh, it will give you this list right here. And I consider this list to be the individual components that make up my job. I can break the job up. So if I come down to number nine down here, grading, and there's really three buttons I use. I assign, I hide the thing that's highlighted, or I turn on the thing that's highlighted. Assign the thing that's highlighted. It's, um, it's pretty simple. They're the only three buttons I use. You can also hold down shift and select the whole lot, hide the whole lot, um, hide except the one that I use and stuff like that. So I'm going to assign these to grading, accept that, and then you can see it's still number nine is still sort of grayed here. I can turn it off. Now that won't come back on until I come back in here and tell it to come back on, which is really good. So mass concrete, assign the concrete, turn it off. And it helps clear the job up amazingly. So I can still keep working. So Perlins, and you'll find that there should be a little category for just about everything you do. Okay, you shouldn't need to edit this too much. Accept that. Okay, and the final one, uh, I've got some girts there. So let's come back and do those girts. Girts, assign. One, two, three, four. It's really that simple. If you make the mistake and you put it on, on the wrong one, you just come back in and reassign it to the right one. Works absolutely simple. These guys here, look, they are for my purlons. I can probably get rid of those. I'll probably delete those now. They're in. I don't really want to change anything. Um, and it's pretty quick to get those back in, even if I did.